All right, guys, today I'll show you how you can use Redis as the memory to your LLM model. So we're going to build something like this, where at the core of your LLM model, we have the Redis database, which is going to act as the memory. To run you through one example, let's say the first question you have for your model is the one over here. So you're giving your model some context about who you are, what, what do you do, and where do you live? Before we send your question to the model, we're going to put it to, into the history. So you're going to see the same message over here that's going to be uh, in the Redis memory. And then we fire it off to OpenAI. Once we get a response back from OpenAI, in this case, we get something like this. Uh, OpenAI just uh, tells you that it's great to hear from you. How can I assist you today? We take that response and we put it back into the memory. Here's the memory. Now, when you have a follow-up question, let's say now you're asking it, which country do I live in? The, the answer to this question is going to come from the initial context that you provided to the model. If you did not have a memory in this sequence, then your model won't be able to answer your question. Because of that, the job of the Redis memory here is to sort of keep tally of all the questions that you ask your model. So coming back to the question, so if you ask it, which country do I live in? What, uh, what you want to do is before sending the question to OpenAI, similarly, you are putting it into your Redis memory. And then once it's in the memory, you uh, take the question, ask it to the model, Let's say the model gives you a response. In this case, it says you live in the United States. Again, we take that answer, put it into the memory. Now, the key thing that's happening here is step three. Every time you send your prompt to the model, along, alongside your prompt, you also send every message that is here in the Redis database. That way, when the model is trying to answer your new prompt, it knows everything about the questions leading up to this question or this prompt. Uh, that way it can reuse the context and answer your question. So that's how it's going to work conceptually. But let's jump into the code now to show you how, how you can build something like this. So this is all you need to have a working version of what I just showed you. Uh, let me run you through the different parts that are important. I'll also have the code linked in the description below in a GitHub repository. So if you have any questions, feel free to uh, feel free to leave them in the comments as well. Okay. Okay. So uh, we have a locally running Redis cluster. So if you look to my left over here, you see a couple of data already. Uh, this chat uh, folder. This is the most important thing we're going to look into, uh, but we're going to build it from scratch. Okay. So at first here, we are creating our model. In this case, we're going to use the chat OpenAI model. Uh, over here, I am uh, defining the prompt. So uh, whatever question we want to ask the model, uh, it's going to go over here. And then uh, this is one of the things you need to make the whole memory concept work in Langchain. Uh, you need to give it a message placeholder, a variable name history. This way, every time uh, uh, the, the questions are going to the prompt, uh, we're going to build up this uh, array called history. And this is the array history that's going to be actually stored in your uh, database, in this case, Redis. So you uh, don't want to forget to put this line here. So once you have the template here, we are creating a chain with the template and the model. Now this is where the Redis logic is going to come in. The First thing we do is instantiate a Redis instance. So we already have Redis running locally in port 6379, and I have some hard-coded password here as well. So this is the same client that you see here. So every single piece of data that's stored here is coming uh, from, the, from the script, uh, oops, uh, from the script here and being stored in your local instance. Uh, get Redis history. This function returns the Redis chat message history class, 
which is coming from Langchain Redis. So this is the wrapper around Redis that helps you actually store the uh, message history. Um, when when you are when you're uh, defining the get Redis history function, it's important to note that you always need a session ID. I'll come to why we need a session ID in a bit. So you pass it to your client and then a session ID. Okay. So once you have that defined, this is your chain with the history. So your original chain did not have history. Uh, and now you want to wrap that chain in this runnable with message history. Now, the, the message history is going to take in a couple of key parameters. It's going to take in the chain, your original chain. And then this is the function you want to pass it, the get read is history. So let's look into the runnable with message history class. So if you look at the class here and I scroll down, you're going to see this as a, a required parameter, get session history. And uh, this is a function that returns a new base chat message history. So the same thing we're returning from here. Uh, and the function should either take a single positional argument, session ID, and that is also what we're passing here. So you want to make sure that the, the function signature or the function that you're passing as the get session history uh, both returns the base chat message history and also takes in a session ID. That's how Langchain will know uh, which, uh, which uh, session ID to uh, either fetch or store your messages to. And then you have the input message key. So this is the prompt that you ask it. So if you remember, we had the dynamic prompt uh, set to question. And then the history message key should be the same as whatever your placeholder is here, in this case, history. Um, yeah, so that's all you need to kick off the Redis memory and wrap it with your LLM chain. So we're instantiating the Redis instance we define a function that uh, takes in the session ID and spits out a base chat message history object or class. Um, and then you wrap your chain with this runnable with message history that's coming from the runnable.history module. And the key thing here is you want to pass it the uh, your custom function. You want to make sure that the input message key is the same as what you have in the prompt. And the uh, history message key is the same as what you have in uh, in the message placeholder. Okay. With all that done, now we can invoke our history with whatever prompt we have. In this case, we just have a while loop that keeps on running. And you're going to see that we, we're asking the user to input a question. When we have the question, we're going to ask the question to our model. Uh, so the key thing here is when we're when we're invoking uh, when when we're invoking the model, of course we need to pass in the question, but we also pass in this config. Uh, and in this config uh, object or dictionary, we have uh, a key called configurable. This is where you're gonna pass in the session ID. The idea with the session ID is you can use this chain for multiple different user or maybe one user can have multiple session and you want to isolate, the history uh, from one another, right? You don't want every single user asking questions to the model to share the same history. Instead, you want to identify them using this concept of session ID, and every session ID will uh, have its own memory, right? Uh, once we go through it, we're going to get a better idea, but if you just look at the data that we have right now, you're going to see within this chat directory, we have Alice123 and test1. Both of these are different session ID. So if I look at Alice123, you're going to see all the questions here. Similarly, when I look at test1, you're going to see a different set of question. Uh, that's how session ID is going to work. But let's look at one example live uh, to sort of tie it all together. Uh, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expand the panel to my right. So let's run it, right? Uh, just to show you what's going to happen when we run it, this is the code that essentially uh, loops and asks you a question, calls the, calls the LLM, gives you the answer or prints out the answer, and then waits for your next question. So at first, I'm going to uh, run it. 
Okay, so now it's asking me to input my question. Let's say, who am I? Uh, okay, so this is a good example, right? So it already knows who I am. So how does it know that? If you take a look at the session ID here, I was using test one. This session ID already exists in our database over here. So if you, if this is the last time I tested it out before starting the video. So you're gonna see that when I asked it the first time what my name was, it replied with, I'm sorry, I don't know. And then I gave it the details, my name, age, and where I live. And then when I asked it a follow-up question, what's my name? It knew what my name was. So let's recreate that with a new session ID. Uh, okay, so we're gonna shut this off and then pick it up again. Uh, oops, I keep on forgetting to change the session ID. Let's say we're gonna do test uh, 777 and then let's run it okay so similarly if I ask it who am I it won't know because I have not given it any context at all now if I ask it uh, or if I give the context right I am Bob I am 30 years old I live in Okay, now it knows the uh, knows a little about me. Now, if I ask it, who am I? It knows that I'm Bob. Now, if I ask it, where do I live? Uh, it knows that I live in New York. Now, it can even infer uh, answers based on the context, right? So, if I instead instead of saying where, if I say which country, It tells me in the United States because it can connect the context I gave it with uh, its own knowledge. Okay, so now if we quickly refresh our Redis instance, you're gonna see a new uh, a new directory here called test777. If you remember, that is the session ID we had here. Now let's look at the different entries within this folder. So in the first one, you can see we have the type human. So this was the human prompt where I asked it, who am I? And then AI, which means the response back from the LLM, uh, it said that it does not remember or it does not know who I am. And if I just follow through this, you're gonna see the sequence of messages that we just went through in our uh, CLI tool, right? Uh, so yeah, and the last one, which country do I live in? Mm, and it knew I lived in the US, right? Now, I kill the program here. Now, if I were to rerun it with the same session ID, test 777, and I asked it, who am I? It remembers I'm Bob. And to finally close the loop, if I had a totally different one, the session ID, ran it, who am I? Uh, it does not remember, right? And finally, you're gonna see the new entry here, the two questions that we just asked. Uh, okay, so hopefully that was helpful. Um, I'll link both the code and the diagram in the description below. Uh, if you have any more questions, just leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I will catch y'all in the next one. Take care, bye-bye.